Imagine living in a country where one drought, one political dispute, or even one broken deal could shut off your water overnight. No, I'm not talking about a desert nation. I'm talking about Singapore, a glittering city of skyscrapers, high finance, and world-class technology. Yet for decades, it had no secure water of its own. Most nations would have collapsed under that pressure. But Singapore? It did the opposite. It turned its biggest weakness into its ultimate strength. Today, this tiny island is a global model of water. Do a nation without water. Singapore, a city of lights, a financial powerhouse, one of the most advanced nations on Earth. But for most of its history, Singapore had no natural water sources, no great rivers, no vast lakes, not even enough groundwater to rely on. Instead, it depended almost entirely on water imported from its neighbor, Malaysia. And that dependence? It was dangerous. Every deal, every drop, came with politics attached. In 1965, when Singapore split from Malaysia, the uh, young nation was fragile. Its independence could literally be switched off at the tap. This was more than a problem of survival. It was a national security threat, a constant reminder, that one wrong move, one broken agreement could bring the entire country to its knees. Singapore knew it had two choices, accept vulnerability or fight back. And what happened next would change everything. The turning point for Singapore, survival meant rethinking water from the ground up. By the late 1960s, leaders understood something simple yet terrifying. If they didn't solve water, there might be no Singapore at all. So the government created a bold, long-term vision, not for the next election cycle, but for the next century. Step one, capture the rain. Tropical storms had always been seen as a nuisance, flooding drains and rushing into the sea. But what if every drop could be saved? Reservoirs were carved into the island. Rivers were channeled. Even canals and drains were redesigned so that the entire city could act like a giant water catchment system. Step two, reduce waste. Leaky pipes and careless use were no longer an option. Engineers tracked every liter, making Singapore's water network one of the most efficient in the world. Households were taught to conserve. Factories were pushed to recycle. Nothing could be wasted. Step three, invest in technology. Back then, the idea of turning seawater into drinking water or recycling sewage sounded like science fiction. But Singapore refused to wait until the technology was perfect. It poured money into research, partnered with global experts, and took risks that most nations avoided. And step four, perhaps the most important, win the people's trust. Because no matter how advanced the science, it would mean nothing if citizens didn't believe in it. This wasn't just a survival plan. This wasn't just a survival plan. It was a nationwide transformation from a tiny, vulnerable island to a country determined to secure every drop of its future. And these early steps laid the foundation for what would become the legendary Four National Taps. The Four National Taps. When Singapore faced its water crisis, the answer wasn't one miracle fix. It was four. The government called them the Four National Taps. Together, they became the backbone of Singapore's survival strategy, each one solving a different problem, and all of them woven together into a system so strong that no single failure could bring the country down. The first tap imported water. For decades, Singapore depended almost entirely on Malaysia's Johor River. That dependence was both a gift and a threat because one political dispute could mean losing the nation's lifeline. Today, Singapore still buys some water from Malaysia, but it's no longer a single point of failure. The second tap, local catchment. Despite its tiny size, Singapore transformed itself into a giant rainwater collector. Reservoir, rivers, even the city's drains were redesigned to funnel stormwater into storage. Now, more than two thirds of the entire island is a water catchment area. Every drop of rain counts. The third tap, new water. This was the boldest idea of all. Purifying used water until it became cleaner than most bottled brands. Through advanced membranes and ultraviolet treatment, sewage was reborn as high-grade drinking water. At first, the public resisted. The thought of drinking recycled water felt unnatural. But through education, transparency, and trust building, the water turned from stigma into national pride. The fourth tap, desalination. The ocean was once a useless expanse of salt water. 
Now with modern desalination plants, it's become a reliable reserve. By drawing from the sea, Singapore unlocked a supply that is practically limitless. Individually, each tap is powerful. But together, they give Singapore something priceless, security. No drought, no neighbor, and no crisis can ever fully choke the system again. This wasn't just water engineering. It was nation building. New water from waste to wonder. If there's one breakthrough that shocked the world, it was new water. For centuries, sewage was the ultimate symbol of waste dirty, unusable, something to be flushed away and forgotten. But Singapore asked a radical question. What if waste could become wealth? The idea was simple in theory, but revolutionary in practice. Used water would be collected, cleaned, and purified through layers of technology. Microfiltration would trap impurities. Reverse osmosis would strip out even the tiniest salt molecules. Ultraviolet light would finish the job, leaving behind water so pure. It often exceeded the standards set by the World Health Organization. But science alone wasn't the challenge. The real battle was psychological. Could people accept drinking water that once flowed through their toilets? At first, the reaction was hesitation, even disgust. But Singapore didn't hide the process. It made the plants open to the public, allowed citizens to watch every stage of purification, and even handed out bottles of new water during national celebrations. Step by step, what once seemed unthinkable became a point of pride. Today, new water supplies around 40% of Singapore's daily demand. By 2060, it could cover more than half. And it's not just about numbers, it's about independence. Because every bottle of new water tells the same story that even the dirtiest challenge can be turned into a nation's greatest strength, desalination, tapping the sea. For centuries, the ocean was both a gift and a curse. It surrounded Singapore on all sides, yet none of its water could be drunk. Salt made it useless. But technology changed everything. Desalination, the process of turning seawater into fresh water became Singapore's final safeguard. The plants use high-pressure membranes to strip salt and impurities from seawater, leaving clean, drinkable water behind. It's energy-intensive, yes, but it's also a source that can never run dry. The first desalination plant opened in 2005. Since then, more have risen along Singapore's coasts, each one adding another layer of protection. Today, desalination can already provide up to 30% of the nation's water needs, and by 2060, it's expected to meet even more. But desalination is about more than numbers. It's about resilience. Because when rainfall is low, when reservoirs dip, when imported water is uncertain, the sea is always there. It represents a kind of ultimate independence. No neighbor, no climate shift, no political deal can take the ocean away. Desalination is not the cheapest solution, but for Singapore, it's the final insurance policy. The last tap that ensures the nation can stand on its own. The hidden cost of success. Singapore may have built one of the world's most secure water systems, but nothing comes without a price. Every drop of new water, every liter from desalination, carries a hidden cost, energy. Running high pressure pumps, membranes, and ultraviolet systems consumes vast amounts of electricity. And in a world facing climate change, energy itself is becoming more expensive and less predictable. Then there's the issue of waste. Desalination produces brine, highly concentrated salt water, which must be released back into the sea. If not managed carefully, it can damage marine life and ecosystems. Another challenge is cost. Water pricing in Singapore is deliberately high, not just to pay for advanced technology, but also to remind people that every drop is precious. That means families and businesses must always adapt to higher bills. And perhaps the greatest risk of all is complacency. After decades of success, the danger is believing the problem has been solved forever. But water, like climate, is never truly stable. Rising sea levels, extreme weather, and shifting regional politics could still test the system in ways no model can predict. So while Singapore has built resilience, it cannot afford to relax. Its water story is not just about technology. It's about constant vigilance. The global lesson, Singapore's story is more than an engineering miracle. It's proof that even the smallest, most vulnerable nations can turn weakness into power. When faced with scarcity, many countries wait until crisis hits. Singapore did the opposite. It invested early, experimented boldly, and treated water not as a luxury, but as a matter of survival. Today, 
while major cities from Los Angeles to Cape Town struggle with droughts. Singapore stands as a model of resilience. Its four national taps are studied by engineers and policymakers worldwide. Nations from the Middle East to Africa are adapting. Singapore's playbook to secure their own futures. But perhaps the most important lesson isn't about pipes or membranes. It's about mindset. Singapore showed that water security isn't just a technical challenge, it's a national culture. A culture of planning 50 years ahead. A culture of valuing every drop. And that mindset is what the world needs most. Because the next century won't just be defined by oil or technology, it will be defined by water. Singapore has already written its survival story. The question now is, who will learn from it before it's too late?